Kirk Stoyle as the director of the Michigan Department of Transportation. And these have got to be exciting times, but they've got to be challenging ones. How do you prepare a state with all its transportation infrastructure for this move to autonomy and mobility? You know, it, it is a big, big challenge, but as we look forward to what the opportunities are, the opportunities to, to reduce those 40,000 fatalities that happens on, on the nation's roads, that's a, it's a thousand in the state of Michigan. The opportunity to, to reduce those is what really drives uh, all of us in the Department of Transportation to figure out how do we help, how do we work in this environment and, and help auto companies uh, and work collaboratively with, with that whole supply chain to figure out how we get here. So what are you doing? Well, we've got a number of things going on. We've got, uh, we work directly with individual companies on pilots. If somebody's got some great technology they want to try, we say, look, bring it over, bring your toys, we'll bring our toys, we'll play in the sandbox, we'll both learn together. We've had a couple of great, great pilots that we've done with a couple of different companies that have helped us move forward. But one of them in particular, outside the General Motors Tech Center, we did, a, we instrumented a couple intersections with traffic signals, really smart inter, uh, uh, signals. From that experiment, we changed our traffic signal specs and said, all right, every signal we put up from, from that day forward, which is about a year ago, is going to have all the adaptability for future autonomy. We don't know exactly what it looks like, but that connectivity is going to be built right in. We replace traffic signals every year somewhere. So we changed that standard and said, when we put in a new one, it's going to have all this con connectivity for the future. Even as we rebuild the freeway, we see lots of freeways in Southeast Michigan being built. We're putting the brains down below so that as this whole system evolves, we have the ability to react and adapt to it. What kind of technology are you putting there? Is this the uh, DSRC, communication, car to infrastructure kind of thing? So that's that's part of it. What we're focused on is, is the communications below it. So something as simple as a fiber optic connection, right? So the traffic signals are connected by fiber optics. And then within those signals, we take, we keep all the technology the same all the way up to that radio. So whether it's DSRC or cellular VDX or, or 5G, what we're, what we're doing is minimizing the amount of, of change that would have to happen when that all gets sorted out. So we're, we're investing everything all the way up to that radio and we're putting in DSRC today because that's a technology that's available today. But as we looked at it, it's a really a matter of switching the radio out at some point in the future. How much infrastructure needs to be put in for autonomous cars? And I ask it because Waymo's already racked up something like 8 million test mm -hmm. miles on existing roads. Cruise Automation says it's racking up a million miles a month sure. without anything special in the infrastructure. So what do you think is needed for the road infrastructure to accommodate autonomy? You know, as we've talked to all of those companies, uh, and General Motors and Ford and the rest, you know, the most important thing that a public agency can do today is good paint lines. But if you're relying on a good paint line, 50% of the public roads in Michigan are gravel. You'll never have a paint line. And subdivision streets, local city streets, don't have paint lines. So where they're at, we're focused on, on making sure that we put those in place. But a true automated car is sensing its environment. Now where we see the real benefit, and I think uh, people that are really studying this understand is the connectivity. When you connect all of those vehicles, so whether it's vehicle to vehicle, so they're sharing information, that's when you start to get the safety benefits and you get the congestion reduction benefits. At some point, it has to sense what's going on in the environment. So yes, you could have a machine reader that, that reads a red light or a green light, but at the same time, you can have the information being transmitted from them uh, so that the machine knows it's going to change instead of, oh, the light just changed. It knows it's going to change in two minutes or two seconds, whatever that time frame is. So I think we're in a, a transition period where there will be more infrastructure as cars develop more, because it's not going to happen overnight, just like it's not going to get implemented in all cars overnight. So uh, I've encouraged agencies to, to, to invest in that basic backbone, the architecture down below, that as this develops, you can add to it. Okay, last question. Can we afford this, or how expensive is it? From an infrastructure perspective, uh, what we're anticipating is the signals. We spent about $200,000 for a regular traffic signal. That's the cabinets and the hardware, all the rest of that. Uh, we actually have a project on the, out for bids right now. We're going to find out. Uh, we anticipate that that number is a couple of thousand dollars more to put in all the all of the, the future technology. 
So, and, and you know, as we all know, as technology becomes mainstream, the prices come down. So we're going to find it out, and, uh, and we're going to we're going to scope it out and be able to tell all of our other public agencies this is what you should be doing, or this didn't really work, and we'll modify it and go forward. Well, good, Kirk Stoidel. Thanks so much for your update on what MDOT is doing about the move to mobility. Right. Future Mobility is about digitizing the driver, vehicle, and environment. Thanks to high-performance radar sensor technology, autonomous driving will soon be reality.